This morning, we are taking our Today Climate series into the deep. Our planet's oceans could hold the key to slowing climate change and offer clues about the origins of life here on Earth. Now researchers have a new state-of-the-art vessel to help explore this underwater frontier. It's called the FACOR-2. Scientists can use it at no cost thanks to the nonprofit Schmidt Ocean Institute, funded by philanthropist Wendy Schmidt and her husband, Eric former CEO of Google. Wendy Schmidt joins us this morning. So good to have good you. Morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Really excited to be here. Yeah. What a great idea. What a great mission. For folks who are not familiar, though, tell us about the, the, the Schmidt Ocean Institute and its mission. We saw a problem back in 2009 that the oceans are under attack hmm. and scientists don't have access to ships often enough to go and do the research they want to do. Hmm. So we decided to create that platform and to invite science parties from all over the world to use our ship wow. and to share their information in real time transparently with the community and with the public. So okay. Wendy, why is that important to, to make sure the public gets to see all this information? Because most of life on Earth is in the ocean. We're searching for life. Mm -hmm. We're searching to map the bottom of the ocean. We have better maps of the back of the moon than we do of our own planet. Wow. Mm -hmm. We can't protect something when we talk about Earth Day mm -hmm. that we don't understand. So our mission is to bring the scientists of the world together to explain what's going on, to take our technology that's amazing now. You can be an explorer, Al. You can go on one of our missions. I'm Hello. coming. Anyone. I'm there. You can get on YouTube and go along with our robotic vessel, wow. Sebastian, to places no human eye has ever seen. Mm -hmm. That's so to interesting. places you could not go. So it just returned from its inaugural uh, expedition. I was just looking about at this out under the water, and it captured these stunning images, from what I understand, of uh, these underwater vents. Can you connect the dots between what's happening down there to what we're what's happening here on the ground? Absolutely. It's all connected. Yeah. I wish I'd grown up knowing that. Mm. I discovered the ocean in midlife. But the fact is, the ocean, the atmosphere, and the pictures. land are completely connected in ways people really need to understand. Our scientists that visited on Falcor 2 uh, at the Mid-Atlantic Range went to look for hydrothermal vents. That's what you were describing. Okay. These things can rise up 200 feet tall, and they're with the magma of the Earth. Its mm. crust me meets ocean water mm -hmm. and creates this chemical effect. The water's boiling. It's filled with sulfur. And guess what else? What? Life. Life. <laughs> How does it look at that? Teeming with life. Look at mm. that. You wouldn't expect life on Earth to look like that. No. Right. So this challenges all of us to think about what life on Earth really is mm. and what we need to protect because the ocean is the source yeah. of all life. Right. It's so special to see that imagery. Um, so this weekend, you're going to receive the President's Award for Conservation from the Explorers Club. I thought it was interesting that you noted Maybe we shouldn't call it conservation. Maybe it should be restoration because mm. you can't conserve what it is right now. You really want to restore what the ocean should be. Yes. I mean, the oceans have been under attack my entire lifetime, mm -hmm. unfortunately, for all the reasons you know. You've done stories on plastic yep. pollution and overfishing and all of this stuff. And we, we need to change our relationship. We can't conserve something we're destroying. Mm. We need to think about restoring it. Hmm. to its, its healthy state, because health on land depends on health in the ocean. You speak about health and, and the ocean, and so we know so little right now. What are some of the things that we can will we be able to glean from the ocean, from uh, different life sources, different uh, biofuels, different, different food sources? There are many resources in the ocean. And they could be accessible to us, but until we understand through the kinds of expeditions we're doing at Schmidt Ocean Institute, we really should be careful. We could damage very uh -huh. vital systems in the mm -hmm. ocean in pursuing our industries. We did that in the last hundred years. Mm -hmm. yeah. We need to do a better job for the future. Wendy, for folks who are watching or listening right now, uh, who, who, they're in the research field who might be interested in becoming a part of this, how do they go about doing that? We accept proposals of interest okay. that come to Schmidt Ocean Institute. Our boat will be in seven different ocean basins over the next seven years, wow. so people will know where we're going to be. We're going to go to places that have never been explored, wow. never should, been mapped. We should point out this is quite the boat as well. This is quite the facility. Well, it's amazing. We refitted an old boat that was um, uh, working on oil platforms, mm. a very seaworthy vessel. But it took 18 months mm. during the pandemic, mm. amazingly, mm. that everything got done. And we were able to launch this march out of Spain. Mm. 
Can't wait so to see what's going on. I can't wait to see. I know. I can't wait You're to see what is There's discovered. There's a look at the booth there. There's a look. <laughs> what a great concept. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Wendy. Thanks for all the work you're doing. Thank mm. you. Uh, third hour of today. Right back after this. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.